Hi, everybody. How are you? How have you been? I would legitimately like to know. Welcome to Seriously Ask, where you ask me all your most pressing questions, and I try to be philosophical, and in my own head it makes sense, but to you it might not. But maybe if you're in tune enough, you know exactly what I'm saying. Let's begin. What's going on with Seriously Strange podcast slash Shadowcast? I miss you and Kaylee Elise. Well, thank you so much for asking. I've been meaning to address that. It is the Seriously Strange podcast now, and it will be returning. We're looking to film, well, we're looking to film episodes, yes. I'm being completely truthful with that. We're gonna actually gonna set up this camera. She's gonna set up her camera. We're actually gonna put in a version on my channel, and then plus the audio versions will still go on SoundCloud and iTunes and all the things you love, and uh, Google Music or whatever the hell it is. Um, I don't think it's popped up on there yet, but they are uploading it to that, so that's an option for you Android freaks. <laughs> I used to be one of you. Still kind of am. But uh, yeah, we're hoping to return that this weekend, so yeah, it's exciting. We've been missing it so bad, but you know, some changes had to to be made and now we're getting back into the groove so we appreciate your patience honestly and we appreciate how how passionate you've been about having it back we really do who would you rather meet and have a conversation with john wilkes booth or lee harvey oswald lee harvey oswald i feel he'd have a lot more to say john wilkes booth has his own you know story and all that nonsense but i think the jfk assassination is the one that's been under the most speculation for a very long time so yeah bring it on lee how does your family and friends, other than Justin and Bob, feel about you covering darker subject matter, serial killers, strange disappearances, etc., in your videos? I think at first, my family mostly was a little weirded out, but uh, otherwise, no, everyone kind of dug it. Uh, my family digs it. You know, they kind of get that I'm kind of like doing the Unsolved Mysteries, Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction, Twilight Zone-ish version for YouTube, and I have a lot of fun with that. And uh, they're they're on board. They like it. So really, nothing, nothing, nothing too weird. Dear The Rob Dyke, if there is reincarnation, what kind of life or person or species would you want to be reborn as? I would probably like to try out being a raven or something, because they're incredibly smart and you can fly, and I've wanted that ability for a while. But that's really it. I can't think of anything else that I'd like to be brought back as at all. Maybe like a superhero or something, but those don't really exist. <laughs> God, it's kind of sad, isn't it? Superheroes don't actually exist, people. Heroes do, but not the super ones. Unless they're superheroes. What's your thoughts on all of the anti-LGBT laws going on and transgender people bathroom stuff? All right, listen, I'm gonna be a person who says that I'm gonna be, I'm, I'm tolerant, okay? I'm freaking tolerant. So if someone disagrees with a lifestyle, that's their thing, okay? And uh, as much as it, you know, may completely suck, it's their thing, okay? It's what they believe. Don't be a hypocrite about it. And here's the thing. If you really want to turn someone around, uh, stop calling them homophobes. They're not homophobes. They're not afraid of gay people. That is not a fear. That is a hatred. They could be a... They, they, they hate gays. They're a gay hater. That's what they all... They are. Call it what it is, please. For the love of God, stop calling it what it isn't. You know, like, oh, they don't like me. They must be afraid of me. No, 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 no. Life is not nearly that convenient. Uh, you know, even if it makes you feel better about yourself, that's not the case. They hate you because you are gay. It's wrong of them, and you need to call it what it is. So, no, they're not homophobes. But the best way to turn someone around is to not give them ammo. You know what I mean? Like, if someone thinks you're an asshole, the one way to just further distance yourself from them is to be an asshole, to confirm that they're right. That's like me going up to you and saying, hey, you're a violent piece of shit who will just punch about anyone in the face over the drop of a hat. And then you punch me in the face to prove me wrong. That's not exactly how it works because in the end, I won. Now, why are you going to let these sons of bitches win? I mean, really. You just got to be a good person. You got to show them, listen, you know, you may hate me, but I don't hate you. I don't hate you. And that's okay that you don't like me, honestly, and I wish you did, but I'm going to move on, and I hope one day maybe you change your perspective, and, you know, I wish you the best moving forward. I, I wish you happiness. Like, that's it. That's it, because it's so hard to hate and fight someone who's just not going to fight back. They're just telling you, listen, I, I, I don't have a problem with you. You can diffuse a person that way. It's really hard to keep going. 
In terms of transgender bathrooms and shit, or the, the laws that people are like, you can't... Dude, honestly, if a transgender person came into the men's room and they looked like a real full-blown woman, you know what I mean? They got that shit going on. I'm going to be a little confused, uh, more than I am offended. Uh, let people just use their damn bathrooms, people. Just do what do what you freaking want. Now, yeah, if a, if a, a rapist, you know, is going into the women's room, assuming he's a male, uh, going into the women's room, and th yeah, that's you've got a problem, but that, that shit happens anyway, okay? It, by allowing transgender people to go into the bathrooms they want to go into, you're not increasing the opportunity for rape. I don't think you get how it works. Um, people are going to be raped in bathrooms anyway. That's just how the world is. That's, that's humanity. That's not transgender. Uh, that's not exclusive. Rape is a, an equal opportunity thing. Humans possess that ability, and they, they will do that sometimes. Uh, so really, it has nothing to do with that. I guarantee if you just let people use their own bathrooms, the instances of rape, are, they're not going to go up at all. And if the media, oh, yes, they're going to No, they're not going up at all. That's not how it works. Um, you're just making the world a a nicer place for some people so just who gives a shit let it go honestly let it freaking go it's gonna happen let it go if you could have personally witnessed any event what would you want to have seen and why any event any event i would like to see the dinosaurs getting wiped out i'd like to hang out with them first and assuming let's assume i can actually survive all this shit okay anything i want i would like to watch the dinosaurs get wiped out I'd like to see any catastrophic event, some world life-ending event. I would like to witness that. That'd be amazing. I wouldn't want to die. But go back here afterwards, have a drink. It's over. And why? I think it's pretty obvious. That shit's pretty nuts, man. I want to see that shit. Because then I could say like, oh yeah, no, the world ended? Yeah, yeah, it did. It did. Yeah, I was there. <laughs> yeah, no biggie. Just uh, took about, I don't know, a couple hours and then everything was gone and I'm like... You know, I walked around for a bit, you know, I'm like, okay, it just kind of got old fast, you know what I'm saying? So I just headed back in the DeLorean. I'd like to know about how you do the research for your videos. Well, first of all, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the people who research with me slash for me, and that's Kaylee and Elena. Uh, those are my two writers for Seriously Strange, and they do so much research for me, and they write so much. Uh, they do a bulk of the work now. Um, every now and then I step in and do like an entire project myself and I always make sure that I look over scripts and I make sure I add a little bit of myself into them unless one of the writers like really spoke to my inner voice and, and did it that well which happens pretty frequently and I'm just like wow this is beautiful this is amazing. Um, that's why I always give my, my, my team credit in like the intro sequence you know what I mean like a show would like their names right there they deserve that and any job they ever want to get they can write me on their resume if that's the path they so choose and I will vouch for them night and day anytime but the research comes from a number of different sources usually let's just say I'm writing a video and this is how my other writers do it too um, if I'm writing a video, I usually have like 20 tabs open, all of different sources. Wikipedia is one of those sources. It's a good way to begin a search. Uh, Listverse is a great way to kind of know what to talk about. Now, Listverse is an incredible site, but I don't take their word for it. Like, and that's no offense to them, but I don't take their word for it. Just like, I don't load up the page and do, you know, like here's Listverse, whatever. Uh, that's not a shot in anybody. I swear to God, good friend. So stop it. Stop, stop right now. Don't, don't be stupid. So I'll go through numerous sources and everything like that. And, um, you know, some Wikipedia and Listverse are good, like, starting points to say, okay, oh, that's a cool story. Let's go look at more information about that. Because they don't provide all the information on their site. It's a very kind of condensed thing. So it's like, I can find out more, uh, in which I do. And I never, like, when I am looking to, like, compose a Twisted Tens or something like that, the list always has to come from numerous places. Um, it can't just come from one spot. That's how I do that. Also, we don't just use Google. We do use books. Um, if they're available, I do have a book on serial killers, which I have utilized a lot. Um, it's an encyclopedia of serial killers. I also try to confirm facts on the internet. I also look up books through the internet. Also, uh, my pride and joy, the most precious gem I have found in the research world is newspaper archives, because a lot of the stories I cover happened a long time ago, and a lot of the photos of the people involved aren't like accessible online. When you go through newspaper archives, you can actually find them. I'm like, holy shit, I actually found this. And uh, I'm the first one who I've seen to use it because I'm the first one to have found it. You have to pay for that shit, though. You have to pay for it monthly. 
Um, but it's worth it because I can get you all the information. Like the, the newspaper the day after the event, I can get you that information. Information that's not available in regular internet articles. So that's how we do it. We try to be as precise as possible. I obviously let all of my writers have access to the newspaper archives and we go from there. And it's a tremendous experience. It's a lot of fun to look through that kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, and that's about that. Have you ever seen a deceased person? Yes, I have. Um, now, I've been to funerals and everything like that. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is um, I've watched someone die. I've um, stood there and I was, I was younger, not too, too young. My mother's been a caretaker for um, what used to be called mentally retarded people when retarded wasn't actually offensive. Um, now it is. Now it's like mentally disabled or developmentally disabled now they want to say and you know that's offensive too that's starting to get there. Back before all this shit was offensive you know they were mentally retarded people. It was a department of mental retardation that's what it was called. That's what she worked through um, and she took care of a bunch of these different types of people and uh, eventually she she was working at group homes and she left there and she eventually brought them to our home so we would have them as part of our family just one at a time. And um, there was one woman named Evelyn, and uh, she was quite a riot. This very frail little old lady, but I'd known her practically all my life, and uh, she would beat the shit out of you. Like she would, she could punch you and break ribs. I mean, it was insane. Um, and she was just very crotchety, very cranky all the time, and uh, she couldn't really speak too well. She could tell you to shut up, shut the fuck up, stuff like that. It was very nice, and she'd also call you a damn Jew. And uh, that was interesting because she was Jewish. So I don't know, whatever. Uh, so we always just kind of went with it and just kind of, you know, let it go. Obviously, we're not going to lecture her like in 2016, you probably would have. But uh, back then, we just let it slide. So um, she had been a big part of my life, really, because my mom worked with her all the time. And I would be with my mom a lot. And uh, when we brought her here, she lived with us for a few years until eventually she passed away. And I knew she was dying. Um, and the paramedics came and uh, I purposely, to have that experience, um, went right outside the room and I looked inside and I watched and um, I just watched as she took her last breath because as morbid as it might seem, I, I felt like I needed to watch someone pass away. I needed that, that experience in my life to know the importance of that, the, the, the severity of something like that. So um, that's what I did. I watched her pass away and it was very sad. And, uh, but it was also, you know, it was bittersweet because she had been so old and, you know, she, the, her quality of life had gone down because she was bedridden at that point. And so, yeah, I've watched, uh, I've seen a deceased person. I've seen it happen. So, uh, yeah, not, not, not the most pleasant of experiences, but it's one that is uh, rather important to me. Hey Rob, question, are all of your sets in one room? Assuming they're in your home, if they aren't removable slash interchangeable, how much space do they take up? Why yes, all of my sets are in one room and I'll show you right now. Okay, so this is the wall that I film on. Uh, there's a lot of junk pretty much everywhere. Excuse the mess. Uh, we have cleaned out a lot, but you know, there is still some left over, but there's some lights aiming up at the set here. Uh, for Seriously Strange. Then you look over there, and that is uh, Question Everything, which I haven't used in a while. Let me try to get around my tripod here, which is when I set up and I use a step ladder to read the scripts and all that stuff. And here's one of the lights. Uh, yeah, so here is uh, Question Everything. Uh, there's a table that I like assemble things on if I need it. Uh, so I haven't used that in a while. Bring that back soon. That banner in the middle right there. Uh, that is, why would you put that on the internet's new banner? Because the show's coming back. If you haven't known that, then you don't follow my social media. Uh, and here is Serial Killer Files. Right there, behind me. And oh yeah, the ceiling has acoustic paneling all over it. As far as the eye can see. Pretty intense. Um, but yeah, and then I always stand right there for Seriously Strange. So yeah, that's, uh, pretty much, it's all in the one room. That should answer the damn question, I think. And there's a green screen that I used to use for caught on camera, but I don't anymore because I just rather use a set. And uh, my cat urinated somewhere down there. So, which is unfortunate, such a casualty. But yeah, this is it. That's pretty much it. Not very interesting, but there you go. 
Thank you very much for watching. If you'd like to see my content, please be sure to subscribe to my channel now, either by clicking on screen or below this video. And of course, you can leave your questions for next time in the comments section below, or you can hop on Twitter and tweet them to me using hashtag seriously ask and then your question. Also, you can take a selfie of yourself Post it on Instagram with the hashtag seriously ask and I will pull from there as well. Before you go though, please be sure to check out my last episode on unbelievable coincidences that actually happen. It's my second sequel that I've ever done on my channel. You can click on screen now. You can press that little slide thing that's coming out right now, the card there, or you can go down into the description below and there's a link down there for you. And I will see you next time.